and welcome to another craft along with the Wichita Falls Public Library. My name is Rosalie and I'm going to be showing a couple of crafts, but today is very special because we're going to be collaborating with the teen librarian. So I'm going to first give it over to Kelly to let her show you a couple of Sharpie crafts that she has and then I'll come back. Hi, I'm Kelly, the teen librarian at the Wichita Falls Public Library. Today we're going to be doing a couple of different Sharpie crafts. The first one is going to be Sharpie watercoloring. So you're going to want to get some of your colored Sharpies. You're going to need alcohol. You're going to need a plastic baggie, a paintbrush, and paper towels to clean up your mess. So what you're going to do is take one of your Sharpie colors. You're going to color it on the paper bag. You're going to have multiple layers so you have more ink color on there. And then what you're going to do is get just a little bit of your alcohol. This is going to work a little bit better if you have a droplet, but we're just going to use the cap. And you're going to pour some alcohol on here. And then kind of mix it up so you're going to get sort of a watercolor effect. And just put it on your canvas. This is going to work better with a canvas, but you can use heavy cardstock also. So this is a lighter color, so it's not going to show up as well unless you use less alcohol than what I used. But for every color, you can clean up your mess, reuse the bag, and just do this all over again with each one. Just add a little bit on here. That was just a little drop. And then dry this off a little bit. Since these are lighter colors, you don't need to put it in water. Yeah. And hopefully it's dark enough. Yeah. And then you can choose whatever colors you want and make whatever watercolor masterpiece that you wish to. I tested it earlier and this is what I got. The next Sharpie art that we're going to do is a sunburst ink blot effect. So if you've ever done the little tie-dye or sunburst, you're going to start with that. Where you kind of just do a little scribble circle in the middle. You can do that as small or big as you want to. And then you'll just keep on going with the different colors that you have and keep on doing this until you either fill the whole canvas or whichever space that you want to. Okay, so we had a little user error. I'm not the best camera person in the world, clearly, but we lost a couple of the last scenes of Kelly finishing this project. So I wanted to show you what she was working on and what she did after she finished coloring this was use a q-tip with some isopropyl alcohol and that's how she got that blot and if you look at one of her previous run-throughs use a q-tip or an eyedropper a fill of isopropyl alcohol and just start blotting away and you see it will mix the colors together and then she had a couple of examples of just leaving it without any markings and outlining the blots. And that is the second craft. Thank you, Kelly, that was great. So, on my end, I've got a couple of different crafts to show you as well. One that didn't work out too great and one that did okay. So we're gonna go through the motions for each one and I'm gonna talk about why one of them maybe didn't work and what you could do to fix it. Now, for adults, we're gonna be focusing on a couple of crafts that will transform pillowcases or dishcloths. The first one is going to be a type of cheating at dip dyeing or ombre effect. We're going to talk about supplies first. You need a sharpie or multiple sharpies. You can use a ton of different colors. Um, I definitely suggest testing them out first, but we'll talk about that in a second. Isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle. Now this guy is 71%. You can go higher, just do not go lower. And what we're going to be using today is a pillowcase from my home. So it's plain and white. You can use different colors, but it will change the result of what you get. And you can also use different fabrics. Um, you can use uh, dishcloths, sheets, uh, t-shirts, really anything that's going to absorb pretty well is going to work. And you definitely want to make sure to run it through the wash first. 
For our intensive purposes, we're going to be using pillowcases, and I'm going to show you what we're doing next. I did want to show you all some test runs that I had beforehand. So if you can see, it's just important to make sure you know what color you're going to be getting out of your ink. So I was testing this out on some fabric and this came out pink instead of purple. Now I like it, but if that's not really what you're going for, what I would suggest is either getting a scrap piece of cloth or a piece of paper and just testing out what the color is going to look like once it starts bleeding from the alcohol. So do that first just so you're not surprised. So what you're going to do is take the very edge of your fabric, say your pillowcase, so you're going at the open end, and you're going to draw a very thick and very dark line of the color that you're wanting to use. Um, don't go too high up, but make sure that it's very, very saturated. So let me show you what I mean by coloring first. So I've got my pretty Sharpie and the very edge of the fabric is where we're going to color. And then what I'm going to do is go up just a little bit on the outside as well. So let me give you an example. Also wear gloves before you do this or else you will end up with stained hands. So I'm talking about the very tip, the very edge in there. So just make a nice long border. Like I said, you can use multiple colors, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like with just the one. And whenever I'm done coloring this whole front part, I will be right back. And we're back. As you can see, I went ahead and just laid it down and did a nice, thick, multiple coats of, of the Sharpie on the very edge of it. So we're going to take our spray bottle full of isopropyl alcohol and just start spritzing the line. So the more you spray on there, the better the color is going to wick up the fabric. So I've done sprayed just the edge, but a good amount of, of alcohol do this in a ventilated area because it's a lot. Um, and we're going to let that sit for a bit. Okay, and this is basically how it turned out. We got really nothing much on this side, on the correct side of the fabric. But if you flip it there, you'll see a good amount of bleeding and it looks really pretty. So I'm not sure how to combat that, but my suggestion is to flip it inside out. Um, because every time I would spray on the outside like that, it would always wick up on the inside. So I'm gonna guess that's what's gonna be, gonna be what fixes it. For our second craft, we're going to need the same amount of materials, just a piece of white fabric of some sort that you want to de uh, decorate, one or two Sharpies, and your spray bottle of isopropyl alcohol. So what we're going to do this time, instead of doing like an ombre effect, we're going to just draw, have a bit of fun on the edge of it, and then spray it with isopropyl alcohol and see what happens. I'm only doing it on the edge here so that I don't get it on the back of the, um, the pillowcase. However, if you want to do both sides or you want to be able to do more of the fabric, just get a piece of cardboard that you can keep the two sides separated and you'll be fine. And all I'm going to do is a small little border of flowers, hearts, really whatever you want. I'm probably going to do a couple of both. And um, whenever I'm done drawing that, we'll be back. Okay, so I've got my little design uh, printed on there. Again, you can use whatever kind of style you want. I would definitely suggest if you're not very comfortable with hand drawing, use stencils or um, get some references from the internet just to kind of give you a guide as far as what you need to do. With our spray bottle again, you're just going to give this border a good spritz. You definitely want to see it pretty soaked. And you can kind of already see it doing some work, but I'm going to bring the camera closer. Okay, so it's already been sprayed. You can see it kind of getting to work. It makes for a really fun blotting and some little 
shadow colors right there. Um, we're gonna let it set for a bit and we'll come back and see what it all does. And I think this one turned out pretty cute. I will point out, apparently, if you use a little too much alcohol, you'll get a little bit of yellowing around the ink. So I'm not sure what the correct ratio is, because you can see it didn't happen with all of them, but it happened with a couple. So yeah, I'd say overall this one was pretty successful, unlike our first, but um, I would try out different patterns like the way this one got colored in and then it just bled all around it. I like it because it's a pretty border, but if that's not what you're going for, I would definitely suggest using straight lines because then you get this fun shadowing effect. Okay, so I think we all kind of learned something together today as far as Sharpies and fabric go. Um, if you're able to get the first craft to work, please, please show us in the comments. Tell me what you did because I really like that one's look and that was the one that I wanted to work the most and of course it didn't. So um, if you figure it out, please tell me and I will see you in the next